A few years ago, I noticed something interesting. When students got back quizzes, they would look at it really briefly, and then they would throw it into the trash. Whether they got an A or they got an F, it didn't matter. They would look at the quiz, be done with it, and then it would go into the trash. Since then, it's been my goal to help students stop throwing their quizzes out and start looking at them, start using them as a tool for learning. How do we do that? Well, the first thing we did was stop writing the grades on the quizzes. Instead of writing a grade, we just mark questions that they might have got wrong. What does this do? Well, now students are forced to look at the questions they got wrong to figure out what they always want to know, which is the score. So at the very least, they have to figure out their score. Once students look at the questions they got wrong, it's easy for them to figure out their grade. But the process doesn't stop there. Once students figure out which questions they got wrong, we ask them to enter this information online. This information is then sent back to us so that we can review it to inform our teaching. But this is only the beginning of the process. Students are given an opportunity to fix their work, to look at why they made a mistake, to understand it, and then to show they can fix it and create, solve, and explain a similar problem. Our goal here is to get them to use this as a tool for learning, not as something that could be filed away or thrown out into the trash. And this has been working. Let's take a look at the data. One of our goals has been to be very transparent. We want to share with you everything we know about quiz results. So on our website, if you click quizzes, right, we review our philosophy on quizzes. We share old quizzes from past years. These are accessible for practice and review. And we also share our data. When students submit their answers, we receive them in an Excel file. We turn that information into graphs so that we can inform our teaching. When students send us their scores online, we're able to quickly turn this into data. And what you notice right away in this chart, which measures the total number of errors on the first two quizzes, this process of reflections and quiz corrections, this process of actually turning the quiz into a tool is working. Look at every question. No matter how much the change, the total number of errors are going down across the board. We're repeating content and we're giving opportunities for reflection, and it seems to really help. You might wonder, what were these questions all about, and is there more data? Well, as part of being transparent, at the bottom of the page, you can download the data that we use. If you click this, and wait a few moments for it to download, this should open as an Excel file. Now this will be dated throughout the year, but here is the original chart, and if you click a question, you can see what the actual question was. So here, this is the first version of the question. Now we repeat concepts on quizzes. Every quiz is cumulative. So every question three will be about graphing coordinates. And here you can see the two questions we've had so far on this topic this year. In this chart, we can see the total errors for two quizzes. We can only see four questions on quiz one, these four blue bars, because there were only four questions on quiz one. But questions five through nine, even though we can't compare our progress, we can still see the number of errors. And this tells us right away that number seven was the biggest issue for our students. So if we click this, right, we can review that question. And we can see what the question was about, and then this helps us figure out what went wrong. Now there's lots of data here, and our goal is to always be transparent, so at the bottom here, you can click on the raw data. Of course I've omitted the students' names and randomized the sequence so we can't tell who got what, but maybe there's something you would like to know about our data. Feel free to use this to help make sense of what's happening in our grade. That's all part of being transparent. But all this data is only really the beginning of the process. Part of our goal goes back to this cycle, to help students study. What we do is give students little tickets that reminds them of what they need to practice. We use the data to help them study. On the ticket, students are told which questions they got right and wrong on the last quiz. 
Then they can walk over to our concept map. It's a board in the room full of concepts throughout the year. And if they made a mistake on, let's say, the third concept, they can go on the concept map and find the third concept and then take practice from that module on the board and master the concept at hand. Of course, this part is optional. We're not going to force students to study in a way that doesn't work for them. Students are given the opportunity to practice what they need to succeed on future quizzes. They're given a chance to master these concepts. And that's our goal this year, to turn quizzes into a tool for formative assessment. And that's our goal this year, to turn quizzes from something that went into the trash and to turn it into a tool for learning, a tool for formative assessment, something that we can build from. Thanks.